بسم اللہ فقمان وحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ہوپ سو یو آل آر گیٹ فائن اینڈ ہیلد یو آل اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اے ویری میجر ٹاپک اے ویری سیریس فار انڈرسٹینڈنگ بیسیکلی وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا سگنیفیکنس آف میوسس سو لیٹس سی وٹ آر بیسیکلی دا سگنیفیکنس آف میوسس So student the thing which we are going to discuss is that the significance you know it very well the significance means the advantage so what is going on that uh, in 19 you can say in 1819 there was a german scientist name is the august weismann he basically have pointed out the main advantage of the meiosis and he came to know the meiosis is necessary to maintain the number of the chromosomes in the next generation as i told you before beta that in meiosis you know that the diploid cell the diploid cell you to convert into the haploid cell and this haploid cell used to join with the other parent cell and will used to produce the baby so due to this meiosis the you can see that the number of the chromosomes are maintained and they can easily transfer into the next generation and that's why the mother have 46 chromosomes and you also have a 46 chromosome and your father also have a 46 chromosome so this is basically you can say the maintenance this is called the maintenance generation has been maintained so the other advantage is that it is not only maintaining the you can say that Uh, maintaining the generation it is not only maintaining the chromosome but it is also ha- actually helping in variation in the next generation let's suppose we all are the human beings and we all are different from each other in our shapes in our you can say in your heights in our intelligent level so this is also basically due to the meiosis and you know very well that the crossing over used to take place in the meiosis one prophase one so that's why the variation used to transfer into the next generation so this was basically two main advantage which were discussed by the august weissman Okay, one of the advantage of the meiosis is that the meiosis used to maintain the number of the chromosomes into the next generation. Now, how the meiosis is maintaining the chromosomes? You know that the mother cell, a mother gamete cell is basically the diploid one. A mother gamete cell is basically, this is a mother cell and this is the gamete. mother gamete cell the reason is that it is going to produce the gamete by the help of the meiosis and now beta what is a gametes gametes are basically beta germ cells of the parents like egg from mother and sperm from the father so they are basically known as the gametes okay where the gametes are basically those cells who used to produce the eggs in the female and the sperm in the male okay so these are the gametes so what we were discussing that the mother gamete cell is basically the diploid one so by the meiosis they are going to produce the haploid cells now what will happen due to this phenomena the next generation have the same number of the chromosomes which is actually present in the mother cell let's suppose this is now a one gamete from the mother cell and there is a one gamete haploid gamete from the father cell and they are going to unite with each other and they are going to produce the diploid cell and which is going to form the zygote and then this zygote will form a whole baby by the help of the mitosis so meiosis work is only to produce the zygote you might have learned about the fertilization fertilization is that a uh, egg used to unite with the sperm of the male and used to produce a zygote and this zygote when further going to divide used to produce a complete baby so now here the work is complete because here now the cell have a 46 number of the chromosome which is going to form a baby and by the help of the mitosis the cells are going to divide basically students what i want to teach you is that ki the mother gamete cell is the diploid one and it's used to produce the gametes the haploid gametes by the help of the meiosis so meiosis by the help of the meiosis the gamete cells used to produce now what will happen 
basically what is going to happen the mother cell the gamete mother cell is going to produce the gametes now let's suppose this is the these are the gametes of the female now one gamete from the mother and the other gamete from the father will come and unite with each other and they are going to form again the diploid gamete it yes, means that 46 number of the chromosome and now this is basically the zygote zygote which is produced after the fertilization after the fertilization from one from mother and one from the father so the zygote is going to form now what will happen for the division will occur now in that case students there will be the mitosis keep in your mind now there is a mitosis that from one cell of million and trillion cells are going to produce which will have the same number of the chromosomes 46 and they are going to produce the baby so the meiosis only occur here that is actually producing the gametes and these gametes are going to unite with each other they are going to form the zygote and then zygote is going to produce you can say that a baby or so the zygote will be the 46 number of the cells and these 46 are going to divide with the help of the mitosis and will produce the baby having the 46 number of the cells in each so that's why it says that meiosis is the one which is basically maintaining the germ line is it clear to you okay no students there are like you can say that there are some plants not plants sorry there are some protozoa or there are some fungi these are the you can say multicellular organism they used to produce their gametes simply by mitosis okay there are some eukaryotic cells which used to produce no but keep in your mind the term gametes what the term gametes mean the gametes means those cells when they are going to unite you can say the gametes are those haploid cell the gametes are those haploid cell that when they are going to unite with each other they are going to form the zygote now unite means that one from the male and one from the female is it clear to you so the gamete cells are basically the haploids a special haploid cells which when used to unite they are going to form the zygote like egg in the mother and in the human being it is like that egg in the mother and sperm from the father so these both cells which are going to produce the eggs and the sperms these are the gametes so obviously in the plants the gametes are those cells which are going to produce a seed which is going to produce the new plants that will be the gametes so in the case of the protozoa and the fungi the gametes are so like they used to produce by the help of the mitosis not by the meiosis but if we are going to discuss about the higher plants higher plants like fruit plants you are going to see like angiosperms gymnosperms these plants they used to grow they used to produce that you can say that seeds they used to produce the seeds or the gametes by the help of the meiosis so let's see that how that come if we are going to discuss for this plant then there is the alternation alternation of generation students you have to understand it very carefully because this is the most important and complicated topic but it is once if you are going to get it then it is very easy to understand so in the alternation of the generation in the plant there is an alternation of the generation alternation alternation means change change in between the generation let's suppose in the plant there are two generation one is a sporophyte And other one is a gametophyte. So these two generations are there in the plant. The one is a sporophyte and other one is the gametophyte. So alternation as means that they are going to alternate in each other. Like sporophyte used to produce a gametophyte and gametophyte used to produce a sporophyte. Sporophyte again used to produce a gametophyte and gametophyte used to produce the sporophyte generation. So there is an alternation of the generation. The generations are continuously changing. Sometimes it's sporophyte used to produce a gametophyte and then gametophyte used to produce the sporophyte. So let's see how that comes. The sporophyte generation have two and diploid cell. So the sporophyte generation have two and cell. Us mean a diploid cell 
and it is going to by the help of the meiosis it is going to produce the haploid cells this i'm discussing about the sporophyte so in the sporophyte the mother gamete cell is basically the diploid one and by help of the meiosis it is going to produce the spores and these spores are basically the which it is going to produce is are the basically the haploid one now these spores are going to give rise to the next generation that is a gametophyte now after that generation it will lead to the gametophyte gametophyte will multiply the spores by the help of the mitosis so the gametophyte is going to multiply these haploid cells and will produce the more haploid cells by the help of the mitosis now these spores are going to unite with each other again and will again they are going to form the diploid cell which is going to give rise to the sporophyte generation again so you have seen that this sporophyte generation have actually helped to make the gametophyte generation and now this gametophyte generation is now helping to produce a sporophyte generation again so this is known as a alternation of the generation let me just go through it once again so that you are going to get it more clearly listen to me students in the sporophyte generation the 2n is basically the diploid the sporophyte is basically a diploid generation the sporophyte is basically a diploid generation with by the help of the meiosis it is going to produce the spores and these spores by the help of the meiosis now these spores are going to give rise to the next generation that is a gametophyte now this gametophyte will produce the multiply this number of the spores you can say by the help of the mitosis these spores are going to reunite with each other and they are going to form again the diploid cell from haploid the two haploid cells are going to form again the diploid cell and this diploid will again give rise the generation to the sporophyte so this is basically known as a alternation of generation okay now you can read this paragraph you are going to get it more clearly the thing which i was explaining you is that okay, there are the fungi and the protozoa which used to produce the gametes haploid gametes through mitosis so they have the ability like they used to grow asexually you can say but if you are going to discuss about the plant life cycle then they used to show the alternation of the generation so what is happening in that case the diploid sporophyte as i told you before the diploid sporophyte generation undergoes meiosis and will produce the haploid spores the way i have told you that 2n is a sporophyte generation and it is going to by the help of the meiosis it is going to go undergo like meiosis and will produce the haploid you have seen that it is going to produce a haploid spore now these haploid spores will grow into the you can say into the haploid gametophyte generation and this gametophyte generation will produce the haploid gametes through mitosis now this will lead to the generation that is a gametophyte and this gametophyte is going to multiply these you can say that i uh, multiply going to these spores by the help of the mitosis see which i have told you now the gametes combine to produce the diploid generation again as i got and we repeat mitosis to produce the diploid spore now when they are going to unite with each other they are going to produce the two and a diploid cell and this diploid also will grow with the help of the mitosis i mean it means that they are going to multiply and then they are going to produce that you can say that exactly a spore for generation so this is basically known as a alternation of the generation which i have explained to you so we have seen the paragraph so that there should be no query relevant to the that it is clearly better that first the sporophyte generation is going to produce by the help of the meiosis it is going to produce the diploid spores and then these diploid 
gametophyte generation give rise to the gametophyte generation and they are going to multiply these haploid gametes by the help of the mitosis and then these gametes used to unite with each other and again they are going to produce the diploid gamete and by the help of the mitosis they are going to increase in number and then they are going to again give rise to the sporophyte generation now the next in advantage or significance is that the production of the variation in next generation so how you will explain this so it is like that students you know it very well that let's suppose this is the i you can say this is the uh, gamete from the mother cell and this is the gamete from the father cell when they are going to unite with each other their homologous chromosomes like the chromosomes from here from a mother cell and the chromosome from the father cell they are going to unite with each other and the homologous are going to uh, homologous uh, chromosomes are going to come closer to each other the synapses and then they are going to exchange their data like yes meta will formation and then the crossing over will occur so now what is happening this cell will form the zygote or like that from this cell obviously that two these two are going to form the zygote and in the zygote what is happening that the homologous pair of the chromosomes are going to get closer to each other and they are resulting in the crossing over now what is happening here this is basically bringing the genetic variation now this genetic variation is basically like it proves that that the offsprings are going to be different from the parent cells that's why you all are different from your parents like it is like that 80% might be you resembling with your mother or 20% might be you resembling with your father or it is like that might 80% you are resembling with your father and 20% with your mother it is not like that you are going to be 100% resembling to your parents so this is basically proving that key meiosis is actually helping in bringing the genetic variation so when the uh, gamete from the mother cell and the gamete from the father cell used to unite with each other during the fertilization the zygote used to form and in the zygote the crossing over used to occur which we have learned in detail so this is basically bringing the variation in the you can say genes a new genetic makeup used to form a new genetic makeup means that obviously beta there is a crossing over like you have seen that the half of the from mother uh, father and half from the mother and they are going to like used to you can say that they are going to form the new kind of the genetic makeup so this will be, bring obviously the genetic variation okay students we have discussed the significance so let's see the uh you can say that error in the meiosis so one of the greater error in the meiosis is basically non disjunction now for understanding the non disjunction we should know that what is basically the disjunction so disjunction basically students in disjunction what is happening if you remember the anaphase 1 in the anaphase 1 which used to happen that these chromosomes are basically pulled by the kinetochore fiber towards themselves right so in anaphase what is happening the you can say that the chromosomes used to you can say that get separate from each other and they are going to pull to their specific point like towards their specific centrosome but as well as in anaphase 2 the same thing used to happen that the chromosomes are going to pulled by the kinetochore fiber toward their side but no this is the disjunction disjunction is basically the proper disjunction of the chromosomes from each other you know where well that the chromosomes are going to attach with each other on the point of the centromere and when the in the anaphase what is happening the kinetochore proteins used to fibers used to break you, you can say they are going to pull the chromosomes toward themselves okay this is the anaphase if this thing is going on normal like let's suppose the chromosomes used to get separate from each other normal then this is known as a disjunction but if let's suppose no then that is known as a non disjunction now what happens what do you mean by no let me to explain you Okay, listen to me very carefully. Basically, what is happening, students? 
listen to me now let's pause if instead of the normal disjunction like what will happen the whole chromosome is going to pull by this instead of this one instead of this fiber the whole chromosome is going to pull by this fiber so this is known as a known disjunction let's, let's mean that the chromosomes are not equally distributed into the each cell let's suppose rest of the chromosomes are equally distributed but one of the chromosome a complete chromosome having two sister chromatin is going to pulled by some like let's suppose with this fiber kinetic fiber so what happens now now here the number of the chromosomes in this cell after the cytokinesis the number of the cell in this chromosomes the number of the chromosome in this cell has increased now and here what the reduction this means that one chromosome have shifted toward this cell so it's mean the chromosome is now 46 plus 1 that is making 47 and in that case what is happening the chromosomes is not like obviously it have lost one chromosome so it's mean that 46 minus 1 will make 45 so it's mean that here 45 chromosomes are going to be in this cell now what will happen student this is going to carry the abnormal human obviously if a human is going to have an 47 number of the chromosomes then that will be going to be an abnormal person and if a person has a 45 obviously less was better you might have seen uh, Khwaja Sarai around you like you can say that uh, she he or she male the Khwaja Sarai these are basically are actually better they are suffering from this disease okay like they are going to be the there is no disjunction there is a no proper disjunction of the chromosomes during the zygote formation so if a, uh, and might you have seen students the micromegaly like which the those who have a small heads okay so they are suffering with the this one disease like 45 having the 45 chromosomes so if students if we are there is a no proper disjunction then it will leads to a disease and this is the greatest error now what is happening here listen to me very carefully let's suppose a 47 number of the cell there's enough cell having the 47 number of the chromosomes now when it is going to multiply obviously by mitosis they are going to produce a cell having the 47 number of the chromosomes right by the help of the mitosis they are going to further you can say that they are going to further multiply and they are going to 47 number of the chromosomes so obviously this is going to produce a human which will have a 46 number of the chromosome and that is yes abnormal is it clear you can read the text during anaphase one and the, uh, the chromosome separate and goes to the opposite pole while during anaphase two the sister chromosomes used to get separate from each other the normal separation of the chromosome is known as a disjunction but sometimes it's happened the separation is not normal and it is known as a non-disjunction this means that the result in the production of the gamete which we have either less or more than the normal number of the chromosomes if such abnormal gametes fuse with the normal gametes then it will result in the abnormal next generation and that is like 47 or 45 chromosomes in the human is it clear to you so you should always have to thanks to your Allah that how Allah the Barakut Allah have perfectly managed us. So if we are going to discuss about the comparison between the mitosis and meiosis, then what do you think that what you how you are going to see that? So it is very clear that in mitosis, what is happening? The homologous chromosomes do not pair. Like there is no homologous chromosomes which we have learned. That homologous chromosomes are better like that. The chromosome who are uh, having the same information used to make the pair with each other. Like one from the parent mother and one from the father. One pair of the chromosome is coming from the mother and one uh, coming from the father during fertilization. Okay. So this is not happening in the mitosis. There is no homologous pairing. While in meiosis, yes, there is a homologous chromosome and the crossing over used to take place. So to advantage, we have learned there is a homologous, like the difference, homologous, as well as the crossing over. 
but there is no crossing over and no homologous pairs you should arrange with each other now if you're going to see the second thing then what is that a single chromosomes a single chromosome used to align their self during the metaphase formation in the metaphase plate so a single chromosomes you can say that used to align their self in the center of the cell and form the metaphase plate but in the case of the meiosis what is happening there's a bivalent tetrad they are going to arrange their self in the center of the cell in the equator of the cell and this is it fine now the next one the next difference is what if you're going to look in the anaphase then what is the difference you are going to get it that in the anaphase you have seen that the chromosome breaks and individual chromatin are going to pull towards the poles you can see that oh obviously the chromosome is in this shape so when they are going to pull during the anaphase so one chromatin will be at each side but in that case in that case the whole chromosome like having a two chromatin are going to pull towards their poles okay the next one difference is that the daughter nuclear nuclei contain diploid number of the chromosomes each chromosome has a single chromatin now what they are saying that this is basically like they are explaining you about let me to explain you after raising that what is actually they are explaining in the last uh, you can say that so listen to me very carefully okay so if you are going to see that beta in that case they are saying that oh sorry <laughs> in that case they are saying k one cell is going to produce the two cells like you have learned about it that 46 number of the chromosomes are going to form the two cells and each cell will have a 46 number of the chromosome but having a single chromatin you can see that they are going to have a one chromatin right so each cell will have the 46 number of the chromosomes and a single chromatin fine but while if we are going to see in the meiosis beta this is the comparison between the mitosis and meiosis 1 this is a comparison you can see that here prophase 1 is written metaphase 1 is written anaphase 1 is written and uh, you can say that daughter cells in the daughter cells so you can see that in that case what is happening the 46 number of the chromosome is going to produce the two cells having the 23 23 number of the chromosomes but this 23 number of the chromosome will have a sister chromatin is it clear to you in that case there was a one chromatin chromosome in that case a chromosome have the sister chromatin so this is the greatest difference hope so you learned it and i mean you get it and if you have any curious students you can ask me till now what you have to do is that you have to focus on your studies okay you have to listen my video very carefully if you have any query watch the video again until unless you're not going to get it because each and every point is clarified there in this video hope so you are going to enjoy this video best of luck allah hafiz assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh